so uh, after my my run today, which uh, my voice might be a little raspy because not only did I run, but I scream sung a bunch of music. Uh, if you were in uh, in Spokane today and you you saw somebody scream singing Five Finger Death Punch down the road, uh, you know why. Um, <laughs> because the the bipolar anarchist was out um being being insane but either way when i got back i did my normal thing i checked all the notifications and i uh you know responded to some emails some messages that sort of thing and then uh argument sort of broke out in a group message i'm in um, and I'm not going to say who started the argument or, you know, who believed what. Um, because I think it was, you know, in a private conversation for a reason. Um, but what I'll say is that, um, is that one of the parties involved was bringing up space. And for those of you who have been watching me for a bit, you know that I'm very cynical about how space is going to work. Um, one of the essay, video essays I'll be doing on my s sparkly, shiny new channel that'll be like, you know, fucking more legit content than these disorganized vlog rant things, um, is going to be on the complexities of like the 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 cynical anti space argument and and the whole point of like maybe doing the same thing elsewhere isn't going to help uh and maybe we need to fix shit here first but uh that sort of provided the ample ground for somebody in that conversation to ask this question um I think it's an interesting one, and so I figure because I haven't recorded a video today, uh, this can be a prompt. He says, we always talk about the collapse. What about after? What is your end goal for society? What, what do you envision the ideal human society? When you envision the ideal human society, what does it look like? So, um... Yeah, I feel like that's a good video prompt. I think we need to start at the foundation. And I mean the foundation of humanity, which is childhood. We need to start there because that's where a lot of these problems get going. How you raise your kids will be the adults they turn into, you know? Um, and more appropriately, how you don't raise them. Sending them to a public school, telling them that they need to spend more of their time in church than with you, um, sending them to a boarding home or something like that in a huge amount of cases. Not all, mind you. But a significant enough amount of cases that I know of many people who were sent there wrongfully and they felt like they were in jail as a kid. Um, even though it was supposed to be like a program for their special needs or whatever. Um, they, re they routinely thought about sending me to one of those, by the way, because they didn't know I was bipolar and... They just kept on throwing diagnoses and medications at me until, you know, I fucking rejected them. And my, my, my mother agreed with that choice because she basically thought that they either weren't doing anything and they were costing her money anyway, or they were making it worse and costing her money anyway. <laughs> um, so we eventually agreed to walk away from those. Um... But now that I know that I'm bipolar, you know, it helps me a shit ton. So if you have a neurodivergent kid, don't 
just think that you're going to pill or paper it over with something or beat them into submission. We need peaceful and respectful parents. And that's going to start before that too, where you responsibly fuck to the best of your ability. You know, like don't have kids if you're not ready for them. Pretty, pretty reasonable advice, right? Um, and while you're doing that, uh, make sure to be clean and sober because if you're going to make a kid, you should make that kid with the best possible circumstances and the least likelihood of fucking your kid up by consuming the wrong thing in the womb. Um, and also on the father's end, um, be clean and sober so that you're able to provide for that like wife and kid seems like relatively obvious but a lot of people seem to have a hard fucking time with that um and their kids end up fucked sometimes literally because the irresponsibility leads to leaving them with some rather unsavory folks so all of that um we need better communities so that when those kids are being raised, let's say a mom needs something to feed her kid. That mom can reliably go down to like the local food bank or, you know, the tribal elder or the neighbor or whatever, 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 in order to get the resources she needs. Like the baby's ill. The baby needs uh, supplies. The baby needs something. The community, if that mother cannot, provides. They, they take care of each other. They treat each other like human beings who need dignity and respect. Um, low crime, obviously, and that's going to increase in an anarchist society, the low crime factor, because a lot of crime is the direct result of prohibition. So you get rid of that, um, organized crime is going to have a whole lot less reason to organize. And the common person is going to be able to access that part of the market without also having to go to the same dark alleyways that pedophiles are in. Noticing a theme? Um, so all of that, right? Treat your children with dignity. You know, talk to them like the human beings they are. Don't just force things on them because that's going to teach them that force is the mechanism. And certainly, like, if a school is doing collective punishment, get that shit to stop or pull them out. Ideally, pull them out or just don't put them in to begin with because holy shit, is school an abusive and evil fucking system? Um, Pavlovian conditioning, you know, bells and, and, and fucking sounds and fucking every, all this stuff to get kids on the program of I'm doing what I was told I'm hopping when they say hop that is why collective punishment works in those circles because they make it seem so easy to just do what the teacher says that when somebody's not doing what the teacher says the teacher can just get all the other students to say hey it was easy for me I had to do it and that mentality pervades the rest of culture it's the reason we have statism because you know i had statism so why shouldn't you i had to pay into social security so why shouldn't you i had to pay back my loans uh student loans 92 percent of which are to the department of education why shouldn't you my life was miserable why shouldn't i replicate that model in yours well because if you want a better fucking future we need to not replicate the bad models dig so, those things, right, you establish, like, the, the, the baseline. And the collective punishment thing is really strong. Like, you saw that with COVID. You saw that with all that shit, where suddenly people were, like, you know, confronting people in public and getting on their ass about shit. Um, you know, because the government told them to and said that we need two weeks to flatten the curve. We need... 
Six months to flatten the curve. We need... The curve is still here. COVID's not over. It's 2022. It's been years, but we're still in a panic about it. Um, That's that collective punishment in action as an adult. And the culture that's been created by the school system and by the way childhood is observed and run these days is only designed to keep that going. You know, and to cement the power of the state because you can get collective punishment out of people if you treat them as a collective to be ruled by another collective. So, you got all that stuff, right? And that's just like a brief overview, you know? Uh, there's a lot of emotional abuse and physical abuse that parents do to kids that they shouldn't, you know? Don't treat them like they're a subject under your government, and they might not feel such a need to rebel that you have all this stuff to quell all the time. Right? That doesn't make sense. I feel like that makes sense. So, all of that. Then when they reach adulthood, especially in America, they're, they're fucking left with a choice. Yeah, I'll be in poverty or I can get a shit job. Or if, if I'm posh, I can go to a university, so that doesn't really count for the vast majority of us. Um, you know, uh, Ivy League shit. Like, there's a lot of people born with a silver spoon up their cunt, and, like, those people are the sorts of people who would want the status quo maintained. So those people would also be much less likely in an anarchist society, and anarchists would be prepared um, for that kind of thing. You know? So ultimately, all of that, right? Um, give people educations if you want. Put as much information on the internet as you want. Have as much information off the internet as you want. Because an educated society capable of thinking for themselves is going to be a lot better off. You know, a lot more anarchist. Um... There's going to be a lot less crime because people are going to be freer. There's going to be a lot less reason to engage in crime. There's like structures. Set up a garden in, in your front yard, not a lawn. You know, a garden where you grow food and other useful plants that can help your neighbors. And then if every neighbor has different plants then you can all benefit from just an absolute fucking smorgasbord of of plants, you know, to eat and live with. Um, you know, and if you're an anarcho-primitivist, right, uh, you would just grow the plants anyway uh, if you wanted to, or just like if you're an extreme primitivist, just live in the woods, you know, and eat what you can. All that would be possible in an anarchist paradigm. Um, you wouldn't be using your businesses or a bank to oppress people. There wouldn't be a military industrial complex or a prison industrial complex in an anarchist paradigm. So those would be fucking great, right? And we wouldn't even need a collapse for any of this to happen, by the way, because we could just start doing it now. If you wanted to help old people, you could do that. You could donate to a uh, an anarcho pension fund. Um, if you wanted to, you know, defend X, Y, and Z, you could just do that because you wouldn't need permission, right? There's, there's a lot there, right? So people trading or people living more sustainably because they're living closer in means that they won't need to do what I did today and, you know, head over to local Walmart in order to pick up some cheap stuff because, It'd be so much cheaper without all the distribution and profit that scraped off the top right now. You know, bake your own food, cook your own food. Or just, you know, find things that you can eat raw. All that would be possible, you know? And you wouldn't have an FDA breathing down your neck if you decided to serve interesting food to people, you know? <sighs> well, what about regulation? What about safety? You could still have star rating systems. You could still have things that were the equivalent of the, you know, A, B, C, D rating system that's po posted on restaurants. You would just have it on the internet. 
or you would have it by word of mouth, like, like we used to. Like, you have fucking options in Anarchy, right? And I know this guy knows that, but, like, so many people don't, right? And so, all of this would, would coincide with people setting up their new structures, their own structures, that aren't controlled by these third parties, whether that structure be an Anprim society, or whether that structure be, you know, a new economic model, like one built by syndicalists, or one built by agorists, or, you know, X, Y, and Z. Like, there's options, right? There's options for defense, there's options for reviewing and, reg and, and regulating things on a voluntary level, there's options for education, because you could just send your kid where you wanted, or nowhere at all if you wanted to unschool them, or nowhere at all if you wanted to homeschool them. Like, there are options. Um, and I think so many people don't recognize just how varied anarchist societies would be. And if you didn't like your current anarchist society, you could move next door and experiment with, like, a syndicalist one. Or, or, you know, mutualist or communist or egoist. You would have options, right? If you didn't like Ancapistan, you could explore Agoraville. Like, so when, when it's voluntary, when it's free of that aggression, where the state's monopoly on violence is maintained, um, there's going to be a lot more models out there. And if you don't like it uh, in your current model, it's not even probably that hard to leave, especially with e-citizenship being a thing these days. Like, you could just have a DAO with, like, the new place and just run it from your old place if they didn't consider that, like, you know, treason or whatever. But it'd be very hard to prosecute treason anyway. Like, I, my whole point you know, even though I'm tired and falling asleep right now, is that my vision of an anarchist future is watching the human experiment actually play out rather than having every experiment being run by the same group of evil people and somehow always turning out the same way. I feel like that's a feature, not a bug. I feel like their systems are designed to eventually get us here so that we can actually, you know, so that we can either choose freedom by getting rid of that or, you know, a life of slavery. Of course, I'm not 100% sure that my sentences are even coming out right because I'm literally falling asleep in my chair. But either way, you know, if this delirious and half-asleep, tired rant tells you anything, then, um... There you go. That that that's that's what my ideal society looks like. Peaceful parenting, organic cooperation, mutual benefit, freedom. People working together to smash the old ways which destroyed us and will likely destroy everything. Because it's like I said in the argument, you know, the likelihood is that people are going to die in a nuclear apocalypse. The likelihood is we're all going to fucking die. Um, and the likelihood is that it's going to be because of the people that people like Elon Musk are pushing. That's the reason the elites want out. That's the reason that they want in on their fucking, like, <laughs> escape pods so that they can go to space is because they know the systems that they've built are fundamentally evil and anti-human. So they're going to need to get away from here because it's all falling down. So we have to get in their way. And if anybody goes to space, it should be the people who earned it by building a system like I described tonight. Right here on Earth. Building a better system earning our place among the stars because we earned it here and it's a good model to replicate and putting the best of humanity, the best it's ever been in the stars. Or at least we fall on a happier planet.
a better planet, a better world of better people with better circumstances, environment, everything. Because we tried to fix this before we moved somewhere else. So, yeah, that's 20 minutes of me falling asleep in my chair. Like, share, and subscribe, and smash the fucking state.